Oh my God. Chauvin verdict emboldens radical leftists. See what I mean? Like they all get, I, I swear to, is there a, it, there has to be a memo. They're all talking about, like I understand that like when there's breaking news, if you go to CNN and MSNBC, they're going to be covering it by and large. But the narrative is going to be fairly split. Obviously, you're going to see a more center left thing on MSNBC than you're going to see on, uh, you know, on CNN. And depending on the time of the week, you're going to see people go more left or more right. Um, you know, like the, the from Chuck Todd to Joy Reid, I suppose, or some vacillation there, or Reverend Al's show. But good God! And by the way, uh, we we've, we've all. I'll show you him losing his shit later because I think he's, I think somebody's looking at the numbers I'm getting on the internet with my giggle fits and going, maybe there's money in this. But a lot about what justice is. He joins. I'm going to tell you, listen here, son. Who did he who? Now I'm coming down here and tell you what. Us tonight, Senator, thanks so much for coming out. I'm not a lawyer, as I know that you are, but my understanding. I'm not a lawyer, as I know that you are. Was you assessed the justice rendered in the case on the terms of that case? So yeah, that's what you did. You don't do it because lefties, you know, want you to throw some, or they're going to burn your house down. That's not how justice is supposed to work, is it? Confused look, confused look, confused look. If a guilty person is convicted. That's justice. Why is this case a referendum on the whole country? Well, it sure ain't. Let me tell you something here to hootie who. I'm listening to the congresswoman. And I, I just realized while you were talking that I left my teeth at home. And I'm thinking, no disrespect, but how, how does anyone get to be her age and, and believe that drivel? I don't know what clip they were playing. I don't know if it's the AOC. It's probably the AOC clip that was what was making around about her going, this isn't justice. Uh, it was, you know, justice would be George Floyd not being dead. <laughs> because of the crime that he was actually stopped for not being a capital crime. I mean, beyond the actions of Chauvin and all that stuff, that the spiral down, that that a, a that a kid with a gun who had just dropped it, who threw his hands up, that there would be some other option in dealing with a circumstance like that, even available to the cop, because the cop, it's not justice that the cop has to carry that death with them everywhere they go. I mean, literally, if you'll recall... Al Powell, the cop in Die Hard, who he talks to all the time, is on was uh, taken off patrol, was on his way home, but he couldn't. He had a desk job because he had drawn his gun on a kid with a toy gun and killed him. If you'll recall, that's the plot point of of that character in Die Hard. That he can't even do it, and he's talking to a guy who can't get his hands on enough guns in a circumstance trying to keep them alive. Um, this to me is what this is all about, Tucker. Yeah, okay, so it was the AOC. This is what it's all about, Tucker. Who do you? No fair-minded person believes that cops, many of whom are racial minorities, get up every day and go to work hoping for the opportunity to be able to hurt someone. Um, I don't think that's what she was saying. But did, I'm sorry, did I miss that part of the clip? Did they play a part of the clip where AOC was like, you know, cops wake up every day hoping to crack some heads. Especially the women and the black ones. What? Including but not limited to people of cover. cover. Of cover. <laughs> but it, just in case you don't know. Um, black people, Hispanic people, Asian people, Native American, AAPI people. Those are people of color to him. And people of cover wear a sheet with the... It, it, well, he can tell you more about it. <laughs> considers himself a I consider myself a person of cover it's not really a cover it's a sheet but you know person call me a duvet American <laughs> just cut two holes and it, it'll work that's not get me on down there but the woke aristas the woke aristas oh I see because she's of Mexican American or Spanish heritage woke aristas woke aristas it's a little sad when you're your key <laughs> he's a duvet American. I'm a duvet American. <laughs> the woke aristas, Mr. Wokester over here. Like the congresswoman. They really believe that. No, they don't. No, they don't. They really do hate cops. Just be No, she doesn't. Because they're cops. No, she doesn't. She does not hate cops just because they're cops. The only people 
who hate cops just because they're cops are people who are driving with expired tags. And I guess, you know, oh, you know who hates cops just because they're cops? Cartels. They really do want to defund the police, which will result in a, a, a fantastic impression of hell. A fantastic impression of hell. Hey, by the way, if you haven't seen uh, Senator Kennedy's uh, uh, impression, his, his impression of hell, it's fantastic. He opens his mouth. His breath does most of the work. The, the Wokeristas... Wokeristas, god damn, dude. You actually think that's clever? That's really where, that's Wokeristas. That's where, yeah. The Wokester, Wokerino. Really do believe that when a, when a cop shoots a criminal, when a cop shoots a criminal, it is always, every single time, the cop's fault. No. No, they don't. Clearly they don't, or they wouldn't bother to say the phrase like unarmed most of the time. Right? But when Woke a toll. <laughs> Woke delicious. Yeah. A criminal shoots a cop. It is always, every single time, the gun's fault. Oh, I see. Now it's a now it's an NRA issue. That's it. Criminals don't shoot people. Guns shoot people. Uh, but only cops. Uh, the, these folks really do have contempt for America. They should have grabbed. Or, 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 both of you have shit in your ears and are either incapable or unwilling uh, to pay attention to any opinion that you disagree with and immediately attribute the most egregious and violent and negative attributes to those very things because of the gigantic gaping holes in your own soul. Attitude, but they have contempt and they're not happy and won't be happy until they take a sledgehammer. You could have an airplane flying as you just lay down your track. You can have, sorry. To America's core. Now Wait, to bring a sledge, listen to this fuckhead. To bring a sledgehammer to America's core. Till they take a sledgehammer to America. Reminder seven, 15,000 police killings since yeah, but th those are not, um, by the way, Jess, um, uh, 15,000 police killings um, in whatever, you know, 20 years or something in a country, 340 million people. D have you seen the, uh, the murder, gun, drug, drug running, rape statistics? I would focus on the unarmed people and solve that. The idea that cops kill people in the process of their duties should not come as a surprise to anybody who uh, wishes that the you know the Harvey Weinstein's of the world had been removed from uh, from regular society and placed into custody a long time ago. We we have no illusion that there are not evil people running about us. Uh, how P Peter Gabriel thought Gallagher. Because core. If the core is racist, bring it. Well, it isn't. If it was racist, then you wouldn't seek to make it work at all. I, no one is arguing that uh, that police aren't shouldn't be judge, jury, and executioner. That they should deliver people. That people should have a public defender if they can't afford a lawyer. That they should have a jury of their peers. That even after a jury of their peers, that judge should be able to review the the sentencing recommendation of a jury and uh, and offer a lesser one or expand one based on the understanding of that. There are no inherent aspects of that that Jason Johnson or anybody else is trying to take a sledgehammer to. That's what he's talking about. The core of it isn't a belief system. It isn't the functioning structure of, of jurisprudence. It's silly. No one is arguing that. No one. Now, you're, you're saying to yourself, probably, look, this is America. You're entitled to believe what you want. Well, yeah. I mean, I am, I am 
I'm looking at two anti-vaxxers, I think. And, and I agree with that. Okay, you just not, and you're allowed to say it, and you're allowed to vote people for people who you believe will uh, express that on uh, the floor of the House and Senate, and that those people will present bills that are an indication of your desires, and that those bills will be become law, and as long as they're within the realm of the Constitution, will remain law and affect how things go. No, no, is that that's not where you're going? And I have hope for them. Um, jellyfish have survived 650 million years. Jellyfish. I Okay, I like you. I am not convinced that he isn't one. There's a very strong possibility that he might have, uh, this. we might be watching a jellyfish, a jellyfish in a suit has, you know, who's like crawled by a dryer, got some stuff out of the lint trap, slapped it on the top of his head, and is now passing himself off as a senator. That's entirely possible. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da. I do have to thank him for now having jellyfish stuck in my head. Um, I've known him all my life. It's been so inconceivable at 13 years. We shook hands and... We've been always inseparable. Uh, He's cinnamon on my toast. We're so close. It's a, Jellyfish has a song, you know, between a guy and his penis. It's a great song. Without a brain. So there is hope for them. But, but, but what I'm disappointed in is... Is um, your aftershave. Your, um, that sometimes sunscreen works too well. Is President Biden. Oh, he's disappointed in President Biden. You mean the him being president part? Yeah. Uh, he yep. Listen, listen, to Tucker. Yep. But, but what I'm disappointed in is President Biden. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Me too. I think we all, we both of us, were hoping that he would be more like just kind of a squintier version of Trump. Uh, he has encouraged this. He encouraged it. I listened to him last night. That must have been terrible. And he knows better. Does he? I mean, does he? Uh, no one can get to be his age with his experience and not know this is nonsense. And I hear people say all the time, you know, cut him some slack. Maybe he's lost his fastball. No. He knows better. And he has... He knows better. He knows very well that this uh, there is no systemic racism in the country. I should know because there used to be a lot more people that talked like me here. And now I've got to split power with these nudniks. He's encouraged it. And it is a hurting America. And it is hurting people. And I knew that President Biden mm. would be left of center. I never dreamed he'd be left of Lenin. <laughs> left of Lenin. Oh boy, hold on one second. Let's see. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Quotes. Let's see. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. Here you go. Well, let's go. Let's go to uh, uh, John Kennedy's worst nightmare. This is Lenin quotes. This is from a website called Marxist.org. Not only is it Marxist, but it's non-profit. Um, the progressive historical role of capitalism may be summed up in two brief propositions. Increase in the productive forces of social labor and the socialization of that labor. But both these facts manifest themselves in extremely diverse processes in different branches of the national economy. Ouch. Perhaps the profoundest cause of disagreement with the Narodniks, mm -hmm, not no relation to the Nudniks, those are the people that John Kennedy has to serve with, is the difference in our fundament, fundamental views on social and economic processes. When studying the latter, the Narodnik usually draws conclusions that point to some moral. He does not regard the diverse groups of persons taking part in the production as creators of various forms of life. He does not set out to present the sum total of social and economic relationships as a result of the mutual relations between these groups, which have different interests and the different historical roles. That's in the, his book, the, the Development of the Capitalism in Russia, The Mission of Capitalism in 1899. Of course, capitalism was entirely resource-based at that time, and the idea that somebody was an inventor uh, as a living was 
1899 was near impossible. There was like seven people inventing shit. Um, and, uh, and, and the early ones who had really made a go at it had been beat to death by the church. If democracy, in essence, means the abolition of class domination, then why should not a socialist minister charm the whole bourgeoisie world by orations on class collaboration? I know. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, that sounds like something. That's like, like, I would honestly, um, if if I was Biden, I would lean into that. Let's see. Um, let's go with something like this. <clears throat> um... Let's see. Left of Lenin. Like why why would he bring up Lenin and not Marx, right? Marx is the theoretical idea. Why would why would John Kennedy bring up and this is kind of important. Why? Why? Why would he bring up uh Lenin in particular? This is why. Because uh in the in in the vernacular of the right and the kind of conversational aspects of it, one of the ways that they downplay Hitler is they upplay Lenin. And they go, well, psh, you know, yeah, sure, Hitler killed a bunch of Jews and gay people and, uh, you know, uh, committed a bunch of euthanasia and got rid of a lot of people, you know, who are mentally challenged or physically deficient. But he doesn't hold the candle to the deaths that Lenin caused. One of the most murderous leaders in the world, 93 years ago, Lenin died on the 21st of uh, January. 2021, Lenin died having killed an estimated 3 million of his people. Acres, the Liberty Summit in Europe will bring together scholars and heroes. Uh, this, the, there he is. Look at him. Some, and I guess, uh, is it his left or our left? I'll go with our, his left. Let's go, because I was going to go Biden's probably. Is that is that young Joe Biden over here? Is that, it's probably his left though. So over here, that's, look at young Joey, little Joseph Biden just hanging out there going, yeah, well try this on for size. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, oh yeah, we can do Stalin as well, sure. Um... But this is, uh, we are marching in a compact group. Oh, see, that's what it is. Look at this. That's that's how Biden's worse because he's not even allowing compact groups. They're big groups. Along a precipitous and difficult path, firmly holding each other by the hand. Gay. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, the left's mission is just brutal. <laughs> you know, I don't have to tell you guys. Um, yeah, so uh, this, is, this is why they bring up uh, Lenin and Marx, um, cause you know, Marx didn't have the ability to kill anybody. I mean, I mean, he, he obviously, you know, in this whole, like Democrats are the real racists kind of thing. I'm surprised they don't bring up Marx more because he did, he did, he was a big fan of racial epithets, particularly ones towards black people. Um, he wasn't particularly friendly. Um, and the system that he was kind of talking about was meant to be, uh, you know, racially homogenous and exclusory, exclusionary so that, you know, yeah, well, there should be Marxism in other countries, but those people should stay in those countries and do them there and not come here unless they're really hot or something. Uh, was Lenin leading a, a riot at, and looting? Yes, he was really good at it. Um, kill millions and get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> like wood. I don't, uh, yes, I have, I, um, that's on my other computer. Um, so I don't, uh, did I move, is that in there? No, I don't have, I have to, I have to move over the, uh, um. Great to be with you, Dick. Thank you. And we developed just some very good friendship. <laughs> I only have a few in here. You know what the hell. Good old boy syndrome is what I call it. That's what I think when they're, when it's, you know, when you're hanging out. John Kennedy and and Tucker Carlson. I let me uh, yeah okay. So I've got another couple minutes. Let me see if I can uh, bring up the Tucker Carlson laugh thing because uh, that's so odd. Um, yeah, man, it's even a. I, I it's. Oh, this is so. Um, and it's um, his problem is with uh, our dear friend Ted Lou, who for the record is is frigging awesome. Love Ted Lou. Um, uh, let's see, let me bring this up. There we go. See, bring this over there. So he's talking about Ted Lou. Ted Lou struggles to make semi-coherent argument is the name of this. I don't think so. I think Ted Lou's pretty good at making his argument. I don't know what part they're cutting into this, but we'll see. Or it's you're being replaced. Oh God, that's loud. 
And by the way, um, this is, uh, understand, I guess, looking into this, that his laugh, his exaggerated laugh, is him trying to um, say that this idea that we're talking about white replacement, uh, and that's what our fear is, what I've been arguing on the show, that in and of itself is absurd. That's So he's laughing at it as such, okay, just to be clear. That's why, beyond him, him becoming a lunatic, the reason he's exaggerate laughing is because it, it's he's, for all the practice he's had, he's actually a fairly shitty liar. Or it's you're being replaced, and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up. <laughs> or it's you're being replaced, and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up. <laughs> he's just reenacting uh, what what the Fox exec said. Um, to him and why he's being moved to Fox Nation, and then they're gonna punt him off uh, of, of the night. They're gonna give him his own, give him a chunk of Fox Nation, and then slowly but surely scoop him out as they put other people into his time slot. So that's it's not really the Ted Lieu thing. Or it's you're being replaced, and there's nothing you can do about it. So shut up. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's that's a, like. Speaking, I mean, that, that laugh is so classic. I'm surprised Dean Cain hasn't, you know, it, they're not giving it best laugh in a 1950s sitcom. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I will say that I, I definitely lose it on the show sometimes and crack up. Largely because of the level of absurdity that I deal with on a regular basis on the show. And I think it's, it's well warranted. But at least mine is friggin' genuine. You know what I mean? Like, I try not to. Sometimes it's just so goddamn funny <laughs> that I can't, I just lose it. He, like, that's contrived. This is a guy trying to sell his own, I'm happy to uh, uh, to people. That I mean, that is a huge, huge thing. Um, that he doesn't feel comfortable enough to just be um, exasperated at his own thing. He has to make it absurd and laugh. Yeah, I'm when I'm laughing, I'm laughing. 